Hey guys, Jim Savoldi, Behavioral Analysis and Markets. It's about 3.15 uh, p.m. on June the 1st. So I'll jump right into these charts. Um, pretty good tracking today. No huge surprises, although I'll talk about this, uh, how sticky this uh, vibration level at 32 turned out to be all day long. Um, so we came into the day looking for um, sort of weakness um, near the open and first hour. Um, 7.30, that's sort of the first hour. So there's your weakness that the model is picking up on. Um, weakness into 8.05 and 8.25. Um, your low here was 7.57-ish. So that was sort of your 8.05 weakness. Um, your 8.25, we were already starting up. And so that's when I sent out that update thinking that um, we could probably uh, break out above this previous high and even probably make a run at like 36 or 38 dollars um, once we pass through that 1133 period so um, that didn't end up working out um, again at the end of the day in retrospect uh, it looks like the the stickiness of this uh, vibration at 32 sort of ruled the day um, here i said if not 36 to 38 that would probably mean that we were failing and we would want to head down and, and retest 2730 that didn't happen either so again Price just wanted to vibrate around 32. It was really sticky all day long. Um, that uh, that $32 retest, I'll show you guys in a minute um, how far back the, that goes. Uh, it's sort of the point of origin. I call it the birth of, of the, the retest. And um, just like with my zones of strength and weakness, they're projected to certain dates and then they basically die. So it's sort of almost like, you know, life in general, humans, trees, everything. Um, so anyway, the really good news is that as we came into the day, there was nothing going on here on the second, right? So even once I was able to get my hands on that data from Friday, um, all that did was filled in a little bit here. And uh, I think maybe something out here on the, uh, I think it generated that zone of strength um, on the third, but we still didn't have anything on the second. So all this data was generated today and it's all bullish. So um, the overnight model is bullish. You can see the uh, after hours trading right now, um, moving higher. Um, Pre-market looks good. Um, the model's predicting strength into 636. Uh, so that's six minutes after the opening bell my time. So, you know, that's really encouraging. Then 710, 732, 830. So that has a really good look to it. I'll show you guys sort of price targets in, um, in the next view. But first, let me show you um, two other things. So here's here's your close here with IEX data, thirty-two dollars and four cents. Uh, this is again, this is IEX data. I think my trade station data was the close was thirty-one ninety-eight. So basically, you know, here we are. We retested thirty-two, and now it becomes vibration. Um, I wanted to show you the velocity characteristics at the <clears throat> at the end of the day. You can see this little stub here. So this little rising stub, that's that's velocity pre predicted for the first hour of trading tomorrow. So that's a great uh, velocity backdrop. Um, the five minute and the one minute today, we're able to sort of uh, kind of go through a resting period and a regrouping period. There's nothing bearish about that. That's just sort of a, um, uh, you know, just a consolidation. And it's a consolidation with a, a slight upside bias, which is, you know, very bullish um, chart wise. Let's see what else we want to look at. Um, uh, your, the bot went out long, um, triggered long probably 10 minutes before the close, something like that. Um, so everything looks good there. So this hopefully will uh, not only answer some questions that are floating around, especially on Reddit. I'm hearing through DMs that there's a lot of people on Reddit trashing me for uh, attempting to uh, put together price and time projections. This. This is the same stuff I've listened to for two decades, you guys. So um, I'm not going to go fight anybody on this. If, if people want to follow my work, they can follow it. If they don't want to, they don't have to. I'll explain to you guys why I do this. Um, it, you know, I'm not trying to pull carnival stunts here. There's a really specific reason. So the clients I catered to were really interested in making money. And some of them traded options. Right. So when you're trading options, it's sort of important to uh, to know um, potential uh, timing at, at which point price may be reached um, has to do with options expiration. There's also um, 
a great advantage in my mind and always knowing what your potential uh, price objective is because it's a sort of a risk reward type of a question on your entry. So, you know, if, if I'm going to risk a dollar, I want to have an upside retest that's, that's more than a dollar above my entry level. You know, maybe maybe want to retest is four dollars above my entry so anyway th those are the reasons now i'll show you also from a forecasting perspective why i do it this this chart is pretty busy for you guys but i want to share it with you um it's a combination of it's mostly just basic technical stuff but um you know it has some of my behavioral components just because uh when you look at the way price acts you you look at the way the, the price wants to move how quickly it wants to move up and down uh, you can learn a lot about the psychology of the participants in the particular stock. So um, it has everything to do with human emotion and behavior. Um, now, these these uh, three lines, I mean, these three green lines, it's just basically, you know, trend one, trend two, trend three, this, this yellow trend four. Um, you guys will probably notice it's fairly basic stuff that if you change trajectory, you know, one, two, three, four times, you start to look at number four as being sort of a terminal terminal trajectory um and these can be drawn on all different time frames so just because it's a terminal trajectory on a, on a you know this is a five minute chart doesn't mean that it's uh you know terminal at uh you know, on an hourly or whatever so the important thing about this as far as the the human nature um uh, uh, component is that we have a we have a trend break we have price sort of moving up. I call these a bull crawl. Usually you'll be tapping, 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 tapping. So when you start a bull crawl like this, and then you get caught up on really strong uh, vibration, like where we are here on 32, remember this was our, our bogey, our, our 32 retest, it was hit. So it becomes vibration. So when you're caught up here, you usually can't continue the bull crawl tapping like that. And so as you trade sideways, it creates more and more of an air pocket to the upside. This was like flip this upside down. This is like the 87 crash. This is like any kind of a explosive move to the upside that you'll usually see. So if I want to look at these zones of strength tomorrow morning, right? And basically these vertical lines I've snapped, that represents the, the, the beginning of that window and the end of that window. Let me clean this up. Um, so so this is basically why this is useful to me so if, if you know any of you guys are listening think that um it's completely worthless to to uh, match time and price then you know like i said you probably want to go uh follow someone else this is the specific reason i do it not only for myself but for uh clients so if price tracks into the model's predicted zone of strength what is the most likely attack target? And especially when you're talking about trading in a new all-time high territory like this, um, you know, the Fibonacci guys will use their, their tools. Um, this is what I use. This works well for me. So 41 to $43 in my mind is a realistic target for the first uh, uh, two hours of trading tomorrow, um, assuming that uh, price tracks the behavioral analysis model. Um, and uh and so that's why i do that you guys this uh particular um small fractal here this is a five minute and you can see that um it's also a smaller version of this sort of larger melt-up fractal that we're tracking um the trajectory the speed line's not anywhere near as steep but all of the elements of the of the move are the same you'll have an uptrend line, you'll drop out of the bottom of it, you'll have re-entry. Once you have re-entry, price wants to race up to the uh, speed line. Um, if you're kind of chopping on your way up to the speed line, the, the final little attack portion usually will change its trajectory like this and get really steep. The interesting thing about this is that this is a speed line jump, okay? See how we blasted through it and now we're getting support and uh, if it tracks the model tomorrow, we'll be up here. That's why I keep telling you guys that when, when we're looking at the bigger picture um, chart that I'll show you in a minute, the 60 minute chart, um, just because I'm giving upside uh, speed line targets and it's not, it's not a predicted target, it's just me saying, if we start to melt up into one of my uh, models predicted zones of strength, then here based on history is the most likely attack target. Just like if I would have been talking to a client live on the phone 
And they asked me down in here, hey, where do you think we're going, Jim? If I had a zone of strength right here into this time period, let's say this is uh, 8.55 in the morning on the 25th, I would just move up time and price. Where's the collision on the speed line? $21.36. That would be my answer to the client. If another client called me and asked me four hours later or two days later, this would be my answer. So this is all I'm doing, you guys, is I'm matching up. Uh, my zones of strength, I'm assuming price is going to continue to track my zones of strength like it has for three straight weeks now, really accurately. Um, and again, that's a component of, I mean, that's because this is such a highly emotional stock, but I'm assuming that's going to happen. And that's why I'm, I'm laying these price targets out to you guys. It doesn't mean that uh, into one of my zones of strength, we're automatically going to melt up to the speed line. It's just saying if things start to get wild, um, and, you know, when this finally happens, it's going to be a full blown, uh, you know, liquidity crisis, you know, margin call related cascade of events. And it could even come from something else. You know, someone else that's short this stock, but not in huge size uh, might be long corn and corn might crash and they might get a margin call and they might have to come over and, and cover this short in AMC. I mean, when you have a mechanical situation like you have in these types of stocks, all sorts of strange things can happen. And I've, I've seen kind of all of them over the years, um, but they all have one thing in common, you know, someone's leverage to the point where they are forced to uh, cover their short. Um, one last point on this chart, and then I'll wrap things up for you guys. Two last points. So you see this note here, 32 retest was born on February 6, 2017. If you guys want to go back, um, and take a look at that date um, and sniff around. You might might be able to figure out where my retest levels come from, um, how I generate them. And, um, you know, I've already told everyone I'm, I'm going to show you guys in a YouTube um, presentation at some point in the not too distant future, um, how I come up with these. My only hesitation is that, you know, then the, the big guys, um, you know, write some of these algorithms into all of the trading strategies and, and, and there you go, you, you have no, you have no edge anymore. Uh, but at this point, I'm, I'm going to show you guys a lot of things that I haven't shown people over the years. So anyway, the other thing I want to show you guys is if, if you're a technical trader and you understand the concept of a trend channel, right? Uh, parallel trend channels, especially the Elliott Wave practitioners out there are familiar with uh, creating very, very early in the move, drawing uh, parallel trend channels. So, uh, if you're tr trading in a parallel trend channel, you guys know this is pretty, this is pretty uh, typical. You, you move to the upper end of the channel, you move to the lower end, you move to the upper end. Now, when you fall out, right, this is the equivalent of right here, a dropout. When you drop out of a parallel trend channel and you re-enter, you usually have a much steeper trajectory. It's, it's like a fast market move. It's like the market saying, oops, we, we thought this was gonna be a, a sell-off or a, a short opportunity. It's not, and there's just a stampede. So in other words, instead of following this trajectory to the top, you'll usually race to the top. It's the same thing that happens in these uh, expanding megaphone patterns, but instead of a parallel where the move is fairly garden variety and doesn't really catch people by surprise. They might just think it's a buy program. These moves in the expanding megaphone patterns, both up and down, um, the pattern itself can be such a, have such a large uh, price gap that you, you know, get the 87 crash, you get these types of moves in these stocks. And so that's the difference. It's, it's an expanding megaphone as opposed to a parallel. If any of you want to learn a little bit more about uh, my behavioral analysis and markets model, you can go to Wikipedia and search for it, behavioral analysis and markets. You, you can um, poke through this. Uh, this is a small sort of snippet of a, um, uh, a larger piece that I, I wrote for someone uh, quite a while back. Uh, so click on about. Uh, it's BAMInvestor.com. Click on about. Click on learn more. <clears throat> and if you want to do a deep dive, um, you can do a deep dive into uh, a bunch of stuff that's, like I said, probably sleeping material for most people out there. You guys may or may not have seen this tweet today, but I'm going to be um, with uh, Terrible to Terrible tomorrow um, after the close. She was kind enough to invite me on um, to uh, to along with some other people. And so uh, that'll be on the second. And then um, 
I'm not certain whether I'm have anything booked on the third talking to, to somebody else, but then on the fourth, um, after the close, I'll be with, um, that's when I'll be with Trey. So, um, big week and look forward to, uh, having some more fun talking to some more people. Um, if you guys want to, if you'd like to join us, you guys, um, look for coupons. I'm going to, the, uh, the 75% off coupon for global pro, uh, expired at the end of May, but, um, we'll have a 65% off coupon for AMC apes, AMC army, all you guys, um, that will, that will bring out at some point, either today or tomorrow, sometime this week. Anyway, thanks a lot. You guys, good luck. Everything looks great. I think tomorrow could be a, could be a big day, obviously. And, um, looking forward to it.